Hi, third graders. Guess who? Yep, it's me, Miss Luckman. And today we are going to talk about, hmm, well, guess. Yep, I hear you reading. Today we're going to look at reading and using language that pertains to time, sequence, and cause and effect. Not too long ago, um, I got a puppy and his name's Baxter. Um, Baxter we got for Christmas when we went back to New York. And in this picture, Baxter is about three months old and he's eaten his banana toy, which he loved very much. So again, he's only three months old in that picture. So this picture was taken just last week. Baxter, Baxter is now a year and a half. So when we think about time and when we think about the language that goes along with time, like we think about clocks, we think about years, we think about dates, all those, that's language that goes along with time. Let's talk about a little bit more. I can describe the relationship between a series of historical events, scientific ideas or concepts, or steps and technical procedures in a text by using language that pertains to time, sequence, and cause and effect. By using time, sequence, and cause and effect in a passage, an author can show how different ideas work together. Now, I just gave you an example of time, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of another example of time really quick, let's hear. Let's um, check out this video. Notice it's the time that's going by, the hours is another language that we use with time. And see what's happening to the ground. dancing. Okay, so that's just a quick and a quick little example how time goes by. Now that went from just three hours to 217 hours. So when we're talking about time, again, we're talking about length, we're talking about hours, we're talking about minutes, we're talking about seconds, years, months, weeks, days. Um, so that's language that pertains to time when we're talking about time. Let's take a look at sequence. How many of you have baked any cookies this, this, um, over this corona epidemic break that we're going through? We've baked lots of cookies at my house, and I think I've shared those with you. Um, here is a little example of sequence that actually gives you the steps. Uh, sequence is uh, how you can show in what order steps should be done, like making a sandwich using sequence. Or in this case, we're going to talk about making a map mask, and they're talking about steps that you use to take a mask. So let's watch this. Now take an old sock, not one that has a mash. Oop, don't cut it all the way.
Guess what goes there? Spot for your nose. That's pretty clever, huh? Wow, I actually kind of want to try that myself. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so as an example there, when we talk about sequence, we're talking about order, steps that you take. Um, so sequence can show an order and what and what show in what order steps should be done. Um, like example, if you tell someone how to make a sandwich, or in this case it was, again, making a mask. And I'm repeating myself, but that's okay. Um, so that's words and language that go with sequence is order, um, there would be numbers, steps, and so on. So now let's look at the last one. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Let's go to the next page, which is going to talk to us about cause and effects. A text can also use cause and effect to explain how or why something happened. And this little, um, this little video is just going to explain to us what cause and effect is. So because she ran, she got tired. The cause is why something happened. The effects is what happened. The cause happens first, but does not always come first in sentences. What are cause and effect? Look for these keywords to help you find. Because, since, so, if, then, before, and after. There's the language that we're looking for. For an example, Angela was happy because, why was she happy? She got to eat cake. The cause was Angela got to eat cake for dessert. The effect was, it made her happy. One more. What's that? He looks angry or scared. Buster saw a UFO in the air and then he started screaming. Because Buster saw a UFO in the, o in the air, the effect was he started screaming. Buster started screaming since he saw a UFO in the air. The cause was Buster saw a UFO in the air and the effect was he started screaming. Cause and effect are the same, but come in a different order in the sentence. If Stephen takes out the trash, then he will get his allowance. So because he takes out the trash, the effect is he's going to get some moolah. So before he can get allowance, he needs to take out the trash. Good job. All right, I think you get the hang of it. So I think that we should remember when you read, ask yourself how the author shows how the different ideas in the passage work together. Does time affect the ideas? Is the text showing a sequence? Or is the author trying to explain a cause and effect? Let's practice. Mmm, peanut butter cookies. Here are the ingredients. One egg, a half a cup of butter, a half a cup of white sugar, a half a cup of brown sugar, a half a cup of peanut butter, a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, one and a quarter cups of flour, two thirds teaspoon baking soda, one quarter teaspoon of salt, 15 peanut butter cups unwrapped. With the help of an adult, turn on the oven to 350 degrees. In a medium bowl, mix together the butter, 
white and brown sugars, and peanut butter. Then stir in the egg and vanilla. Next, stir in the flour, baking soda, and salt for about two minutes. Adding baking soda will make nice fluffy cookies. Fill the cups of the muffin tin about one quarter full with the mixture. Bake for eight to 10 minutes. Remove from the oven. Push a peanut butter cup into the center of each cookie while they're still hot. Cool completely and it makes about 15 cookies. So here's our question. Which step should be done before baking the cookies? So where does it talk about baking the cookies? Oh, right here, it says bake for eight to 10 minutes. So the step before that, again, step is talking about sequence. So this particular article that we're reading is about sequence, or in this case, it's a recipe, isn't it? Fill the cups of the muffin tin about one quarter full with the mixture. So it says, oh, right here, fill the muffin tin about one quarter full. So here is the answer, B. The cookie should bake for blank minutes. Oh, I heard somebody say it. C, eight to 10 minutes. Good one. Let's go on. Which ingredient makes the cookies fluffy? Who remembers without looking? Oh, yep. Oh, I see. People are saying B, baking soda. Let's go double check and make sure we are correct. And it says adding baking soda will make nice fluffy cookies. Now, if I had this as a piece of paper, I would be road mapping it which is what you should be doing. Also, we should be eliminating the answers, getting rid of what we don't need, and proving our answers. I showed you each time where the answers were, so um, without being able to underline them or draw on, on the presentation, um, this is just what we do. But when you can do it yourself, you need to make sure you're road mapping, proving your answer, because you always have to prove it, prove it. You've got to prove it, prove it. So here is some independent practice for you. You're going to read the article, The Presidents of Mount Rushmore. And of course, you're going to answer the questions. Now relax. There's only five of them. OK, so you're going to need a piece of paper and a pencil. Number your pen, your paper one to five and make sure that you're eliminating the A, B, C, D and um, finding what paragraph and so on your answers are in. So please remember, ask yourself how the author shows how the different ideas in the passage work together. Does time affect the ideas? The text showing a sequence or an order, or is the author trying to explain using cause and effect? If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Have a good day, third graders. I miss you.